Hey guys, this is Mel, and I'm here to talk about The Flash, episode 423, titled We Are The Flash, which premiered Tuesday, May 22nd, 2018 on The CW. It's also the season finale um, for this year. I am recording on May 27th. Um, so, huge spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the episode already, please go do so first, and then come and see what to say about the finale. Otherwise, my other video reminders are up on screen. Take a moment to remind yourselves of those. I'm sorry for the delay between um, recordings. Um, a lot of things happened last week. Um, but with that said, I'm going to try to do this in 10 minutes. Uh, let's start the clock and let's begin with what happened in this episode. So timeline-wise, um, 423 continues from where 422 left off, which ended with the um, DeVoe um, starting the Enlightenment through Gideon. Uh, episode reminder is the fact that we are trying to stop the Enlightenment, which is rebooting everyone's brains on Earth so that they're at, like, the basic level once again. So the villain, again, being Clifford DeVoe, him solely, um, with all 12, um, bus meta powers, or not 12, is it 10? I think it's 10 because of follow and, uh, the weeper, he didn't absorb for himself. So anyways, huge episode breakdown storyline wise, um, picked up on three different ones. You have the telepathic invasion. You have the second one being, um, the falling satellite. The third one being the birth of baby girl West. Um, so with the first storyline with the telepathic invasion, you have, um, Marlee's telling Team Flash that Cecile needs to use her telepathy to transfer Barry's consciousness into DeVoe's mind um, in order to find the good part of DeVoe, which happens to be Ralph. So with that said, Ralph gains control of his body once again, forcing DeVoe out of his mind and out of existence. However, though, uh, which leads to story uh, line number two with the following satellite. Just before his demise, DeVoe activated um, his chair, which, um, with Kilgore's powers, um, transferred uh, his consciousness into technology, which had him creating a hologram. Um, but when Marlies destroyed the chair, uh, DeVos' failsafe was uh, having a satellite fall to Central City. Um, so Team Flash has to rush to save people from the falling de debris, and Barry has to rush to use his sonic, sonic boom punch against the satellite to destroy it. However, someone time traveled and in included themselves in that punch so that Barry wouldn't die in the process. Third storyline though, we see uh, the upcoming arrival of Baby Girl West happening throughout the episode as Cecile tries to um, postpone her going into labor so that she can still keep the telepathy needed to help Barry. But after Barry is out of DeVoe's mind, Caitlin helps Cecile um, continue through with her labor until the birth of her daughter. Later on, they have a welcome home party to welcome um, officially welcome baby Jenna Marie West to the family. We also see Wally returning um, to see his new baby sister. And Wally returns with news to Joe that he has finally learned how to be comfortable with himself. Thanks to being a part of the Legends team, he feels like he no longer is in Barry's shadow. Last moments of the episode show the mysterious speedster that uh, has been appearing throughout the second half of the season. The waiter at the, the West Island married, uh, wedding. Um... She comes and she reveals herself as Nora, daughter from the future of Barry and Iris, and she believes she's made a big, big mistake. She's also wearing Iris's uh, speedster jacket, which is one of a kind, as they pointed out. So anyways, moving on, tidbits. Um, we see Captain Singh at the beginning of the episode trying to leave uh, Barry a voicemail about giving him his job back, back due to Iris's blog and the fact that DeVoe is still technically alive. Um, so there's that right around the time the Enlightenment truly happens and uh, technology is taken down. Um, also, we see Marlies deciding to help the world with her mechanical inventions like before she met DeVoe, and she does decline the invitation to join Team Flash so that she can do this. Uh, we see Harry's mind. He, it's been declining throughout the episode, but it is saved from rebooting, though his intelligence is still lost. He's just glad that he has the balance of head and heart now, um, though Team Flash still want to try to gain his intelligence back to, to restore Harry to who he was. Um, however, throughout the episode before they restored his um, mind, Harry was speaking in random phrases very similar to what Barry was doing when he returned from the Speed Force in 401. Um, also, with Cecile's telepathy, she had tapped into something from Caitlin before Barry was sent to Devoe's mind. Uh, there have been many speculations that the voice that Cecile was tapping into was Killer Frost, possibly. Um, so there's that. Also, we have Iris kind of telling Barry that sometime far in the future they will be welcoming their own child, which sets off a nervous Barry, and this was during the welcome party. 
Um, so that was pretty funny there. Uh, but moving on to the most shocking moment of the episode, I have to say that the purple speedster was revealed to be Nora. Um, Nora Allen, many people over her appearance in um, 408 speculated that she would be Don Allen um, from the comics, um, but that is not the case, so that's going to be a surprise there, though it shouldn't really be a surprise that Barry would name um, a daughter of his after his late mom, so there's that. Um, moving on to top three favorite moments, I will have to say Ralph's return was a huge one. I mean, I had very high hopes that this would be a possibility, um, since it, his body was the last one that DeVoe took over and transferred his own consciousness, so I've been hoping since it happened that Ralph would have the opportunity to gain back control of his body, and thankfully it was, so I'm glad to see that happen. It was great to see also the little reunion between um, Barry and Ralph in DeVoe's head, and then also later on with Ralph and the other members of uh, Team Flash, so that was great. Um, another favorite of mine was the party that was held for baby Jenna. It was just great to have them have this calming gathering around them all, celebrating not only the new member of their family, but just celebrating the fact that they defeated DeVoe. Um, so there's that. Um, and the third favorite moment I had was the fact that Barry had mentioned calling in Kara, Oliver, and Wally as people he trusted to help him defeat DeVoe. Unfortunately, Marley's comment on the fact that uh, DeVoe specifically picked the meta power so that he could combat against anyone he could call upon. So, unfortunately, Kara, Oliver, and Wally were not an option. Though, it still puzzles me why um, DeVoe would have, an, have any idea of Kara since she is from another Earth. Um, so, there's that. But it was just great to have those crossover um mentions because even you got Kara for Supergirl mentioned you have Oliver from Arrow mentioned and then Wally he's technically on Flash but currently on Legends so that's another reference to all three of the other shows so that was great to see uh, but moving into top three peeved moments I will have to say a huge peeve of mine was inside DeVoe's mind and it was just the delayed escape from it um, when Barry takes um, Ralph to the streets and how he was saying that once Ralph gets through the wormhole, he will be able to take control of DeVoe's mind again. And yet, the whole time to get from point A to point B, it was just delayed by um, obstacles about fighting their way through, which would make sense, except for the fact that one of them is a speedster. So the fights were entertaining and very extra to pass time and to show off the skills of Ralph and uh, Barry. But realistically, when you're up against a clock and you need to escape, you don't delay to escape. I mean... If you know you have this whole swarm of people coming at you, you use the speed to get to the wormhole as fast as possible. You don't delay and take detours or try to go your opponent to come at you, no. I mean, it seems like at the last final ticking moments, that's what Barry did. He would speed through the wormhole. But what about the rest of it before the hordes of DeVos came in? It just, it seemed really unnecessary. I mean, it's great for entertainment, it's great for extending periods of time and enhance the fighting, but, like, realistically, when you're up against a clock, you don't delay what needs to be done. You try to do it as fast as possible. It's just, those are people of mine I kept thinking, speed through. I mean, why are you taking so long? You shouldn't be taking so long. The only thing I could see it being taken so long is if Barry literally couldn't use his powers, or there's something stopping him from losing his powers, then okay. But there was nothing like that, so... Anyways, uh, moving on to what will I remember most when I look back on this episode, uh, the fact that it's the finale, the fact that we got DeVoe being defeated, um, essentially losing himself not only when Ralph takes control, but also in the Kilgore chairs, or in the big chair with Kilgore's powers, but anyways. Moving on to uh, random questions, very quickly, I just thought of one question though, but is DeVoe's consciousness truly gone, or is there still remnants of it stuck in Ralph's mind? So... That's one question there. Um, also pertaining to that one is uh, when DeVoe's mind left Ralph's body, um, we see, well, again, is he truly gone from Ralph's body or is he just a dormant piece of subconscious now in Ralph? But my, so that's another question there. But another question was, what happened to all the other bus meta powers when DeVoe mind was no longer in control does ralph still have those bus meta powers from all the other ones or is he just strictly with his own power now so there's that um also when devoe died 
How did Kilgore's power still work afterwards on the chair? I didn't understand that. Another question also being, um, if Ralph was able to take control back from DeVoe in his own body, then what happened to all the bus, other bus metas? What happened to their true subconscious? Are they still stuck in their bodies and they're now in a coma? Or, or did he snuff, or did DeVoe snuff them out so that he can remain the true possessor of the body? I mean, well, what happened there? Um, so there's that question. Next question, is Wally now an official, elite, an official permanent member of the Legends team? Or will he, so there's a timer, so will we see him back for season four of Legends or will he be back for season five of Flash as a regular? So there is that question. Um, also, next question, did Nora screw up her own future by intervening in that sonic boom punch that she helped Barry um, complete? So that's one question there. I really hope she didn't do her own flashpoint because that's going to be another repeat of something that I do not want to see. Um, another question, will we see Harry on Team Flash again now that he doesn't have the full extent of his intelligence? Um, another question, could Team Flash find a way to use the Speed Force symbols or what happened with Barry's own ramblings in 401 to find a way to return Harry's intelligence back to him? Truly hope so. We'll have to wait and see about that. Um, also, another question, will Baby Jenna grow up to retain the telepathy, telepathy that Cecile had during the pregnancy, or was that just uh, an odd uh, occurrence during the pregnancy? Another question, will we see Marlies again? I hope in a good capacity. Maybe her, maybe mentions of her doing good around the world. We'll have to wait and see about that. Um, so there's that. Last question, though. Barry and Sisko examined DeVoe's influence on Gideon in the Time Vault, and they contemplated whether or not she could stop the Enlightenment. So my question is, the way that they were talking about Gideon has me thinking that they, they knew that she was still in the Time Vault, and yet they just haven't used her until now. Is that correct to assume, or, or what? Do they just suddenly remember that she's been in the Time Vault, or, or what? Um, so there's that question there. Uh, but moving on to predictions very quickly, because this is the season finale, there is no promo, there is no synopsis, we just have to wait until the San Diego Comic-Con to know what's up for the final year. But it was revealed at the CW Upfronts on May 17th that Season 5 will stay on its Tuesday at 8 p.m. time slot. And also, um, due to, well, it being Season 5, the 100th episode is set to be Episode 508. Um, which could very well be a part of the potential crossover event if they stick to the, the form that they've had over the last three years where the eighth episode is the crossover one. So that'll be very similar to what happened with Arrow when it came to the Dominator crossover happening during its 100th episode, so we'll have to wait and see about that. But some predictions for the upcoming season. I hope that we see Caitlyn's continued search for Killer Frost, maybe figuring out why exactly she appeared when Caitlyn was a child when they all believe that Killer Frost emerged when the Particle Accelerator um, went off. Also, I hope to see Ralph still being a part of Team Flash. I'd hate for them to pull what they did with Julian Albert and how he's gone after, once a new season came, even though he was a part of the team. So I hope Ralph is still with us next season. Also, I want to see them searching for a way to return Harry's intelligence back to him. If not, maybe just like an ounce of it, um, because... Uh, it would just be a shame for Harry to lose all that knowledge, um, even though he does have a greater balance and he seems to accept that. It's just, this is still Harry. I, I mean, I want Harry back. Um, anyways, and I also want to see the adjustment to having baby Jenna in all their lives, not only with Joe and Cecile having to adjust with having a baby in their lives, but also I would want to see maybe um, Barry and Iris having to babysit See how it's like Wally having to babysit maybe other members of Team Flash babysitting at times. We also have to see um, Cecile's daughter come and um, meet her new sister. Um, what was it, Jody? Or I don't know. But anyways, uh, that's all my predictions or hopefuls that we see for season five. But what do you guys think of the finale? What do you guys like about it? What do you think is going to happen next season? Let me know in the comments down below. Love to hear your own thoughts, theories, and predictions about what you think is going to happen next. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. If you want, check out my Tumblr page. The link for that is down below. I read blog promos, web clips, quotes, gifs, synopses, news, all that good stuff, all found in one place. So go check it out. I am behind. I am aware. Hopefully, I'll catch up um, shortly. Um, so keep that in mind. Also, if you want to check um, my WordPress account, which includes everything I post online, link for that is down below. 
uh, it's a work in progress, it's more organized and it's more detailed, so keep that in mind as well. Um, but otherwise, that's about it guys, thank you so much for tuning in, thank you so much for your patience. Next time I'll, I'll do a flash video, um, would probably be for the San Diego Comic Con spoilers, so be on the lookout for that. I also talk about the flash in my CW Upfront coverage uh, video that I have posted, so check that out as well. But otherwise guys, thank you so much for tuning in, thank you so much for your patience, I hope you come back next time to see what I have to say about the flash or check out my other videos um, in the meantime until then this is mel wish you all a great day great week wherever you are bye for now